Some of you may have already seen our previous video showing how to connect the Ubuntu machine to an Active Directory in two minutes using scripts. Now, what we're going to do is now the step-by-step -step version of that and walk you through the process. Now, just on the screen a moment ago, we showed that the Active Directory has nothing under the computer objects in the AD. And now we're going to go ahead and install the necessary uh, packages on the Linux machine. So in this case, that it revolves around three uh, packages. We have the SSSD, the Helm-Clients, and the MSKTUtil. Now, all of those are going to go ahead and install their dependencies, and that's going to be the first part of this. You're then going to get a prompt if sometimes, not always, um, asking for the domain. You do not need to fill that in at this point because the file that would be created based on that you're going to overwrite anyway. So you might as well just leave it blank. Next up, we're going to go ahead and we're start configuring uh, the first part, which is the Kerberos token configuration. So this is the krba5.conf file, which resides under the uh, exet folder. Now, as you can see, the file is not empty in this particular case. So we're going to go ahead and just wipe out the content and remove what's there and start a new one, as it's a much simpler way than playing around with what is a, a large amount of text. Now, the configuration itself is going to be broken up into two parts. One is the lib defaults and the other is the realm. So we're going to go ahead and just paste in the content which we have from earlier. The realm itself is just the domain. Then we're going to define some characteristics like domain lookup for the KDC and the realm is also going to be true. Then under the realm, we're going to specify the KDC. This is fine. And also the admin server. Now, in case you're wondering what the admin server is, that's the server on the domain that has the FISMO role. So the one that's able to read and write to the domain controllers. So once that's done, we can go ahead and actually test if that's working by getting a KList token. So in this case, we just do a KList and then we put in a domain user. Now this can be any user. It just needs the privileges to connect to the domain. Uh, in this case, we don't have one set up, so we're just going to go ahead and use the domain administrator. So we'll enter the password, and once that's done, we should be able to confirm that we've got a Kerberos token using the klist command. Now the output here will show you the Kerberos token and the longevity of it. So in this case, it's due to expire, but in a few days' time from when this was made. This proves so far that the network connectivity is now in place. Um, we can now go ahead and create the computer object on the domain and also take the responding Kerberos token for the computer object and put it into a key tab file. This is done using the msktutil file. So here we have a couple of things. One of them is that the CN names, so we're telling it that we're going to create it in the computer's object. The other one is the name of the local machine and the name of the local machine in the fully qualified domain name. And then finally, the key tab file we're going to place it into. We also have the UPN name, which is the computer name with the dollar sign at the end. And then finally, the domain controller that we're going to be sending this information to. And last but not least, the user credentials only. So with all of that in place, we'll see uh, an output telling us here that no computer object existed, so it created one. And just in case you're using the short name, we'll just go ahead and do the same again, but with the short name. So now both values are entered into our key tab file, and that's going to be important later, because what we're going to do is effectively configure the key tab file with the SSSD. So here we can see the uh, computer object now exists in Active Directory. And we can proceed comfortably knowing that that part was successful. So our next step here is we're going to move the key tab file to somewhere where we're able to, um, let's call it, uh, manage it a little better. So in this case, we're going to go and put it into the uh, exit SSSD um, folder. We can also destroy the existing Kerberos tokens so that we don't need to worry about um, 
dealing with any issues that could arise from having multiple certificates or tokens on the machine. So we're going to go ahead and just do that move. So our next step now is we're going to go ahead and configure the sssd.conf file. It's a straightforward configuration because it's an empty file. So again, this is broken into several sections. We're just going to paste everything in and I'll walk you through a couple of them. Uh, first one is going to be the SSSD service itself, which will make up two parts of this. It will be the NSS service and the PAM. Now, the reason we have PAM is because we're going to use that as an authentication mechanism. And again, you'll see the domain that's specified. Uh, next down, we have for the domains, we've got to actually specify what we're going to use. So here we have a lot of things like host name, AD server, domain name, LDAP, authentication, and then things like the home user directory and the bash shell that we intend to use as the default shell. And again, you'll see basically a lot of the information is repeated. And finally, the key tab file as well. So with those in place, we should now be able to complete the lookups and use the key tab service in order to exchange Kerberos tokens with the Active Directory domain controller. So just finally, we set the security permissions and now we're ready to go ahead and start using it. So in order to do this, we're gonna go ahead and just make one last change, which is to the PAM file. Now in this case, we need to add a line in here to tell the service that in case the local user account can't be found, Go look on the domain and also create the necessary home folder if one does not exist. So as you can see here, um, the optional session below is the SSSSO, which will already do the authentication part. So what we're doing is adding in the home directory. Now with that in place, we can go ahead and restart the service. And effectively, we're good to go. Now, there is one little caveat to this which is we're still not able to log on as a domain user until after we have restarted the machine. However, we can still add users. So as an example here, we can add administrator into the pseudo group, no problem at all. And we can log in as the administrator again with no issue whatsoever. So we should be able to log in. You'll see a little one going creating home directory and that all works fine. Assuming, of course, you enter the correct username and password. Now, keep in mind, if we want to be able to log in and out in the same way that you would a regular Windows desktop, then we're going to need to restart the machine after we've done all of this configuration. Restarting the network is not sufficient. We actually need to do a complete clean boot. Now, some of you were going to have experienced issues with doing this kind of configuration before, particularly with earlier versions. I know that 19.04, because it's running on GNOME, does work perfectly fine. Um, earlier versions on 18, oh, let's just say that didn't work out quite so well, and I did try quite extensively to try and get it working, but just never worked for me the way I wanted. So anyway, if your machine doesn't automatically log in as your user, which unfortunately mine did, so you should not need to log out again. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and log in as our domain user. So in this case, I'm going to log in as administrator. And I'm going to go ahead and put the password in. And what we should now see is effectively a brand new user desktop experience. Because I've never logged in as this user before. So we have the welcome, the help, the customization, everything you'd expect to see from a new user session. And we can go ahead and just sign out. And as you can see, that worked perfectly normally. And we're done in, well, what is it? About eight minutes, even in a relatively slow version. Now, I hope you found this useful. If you did, give us a thumbs up. And as always, till next one.